All right, guys, it's time to ruffle some people's feathers. And ultimately, what I'm gonna be talking about is if you think this way, you're just straight up wrong. And ultimately, we're gonna be talking about Benchmade and why I cannot stand them, why they are honestly a bad company to buy knives from. Now, for starters, I just wanna be full up front here. You know, I don't necessarily think that Benchmade knives are always poorly manufactured, but I think that Benchmade has kind of, for too long, Long, for too many years used a government contracts and b their name and reputation to just sell knives that have poor quality control poor tolerances and are simply not well made and if you don't believe me i have plenty of evidence testing hard testing both my auto adamus my large one here and my mini adamus my 273 and i can tell you that the way that these knives are marketed does not align with their actual performance in play so i just want to say that you know i do have some experience here this isn't me you know trying to just bash a company blindly and i want to make it clear too because i've been pretty ardently against gerber as well and when it comes to people like gerber as well i don't just sit there and say oh these knives suck i'm, I'm not on some like you know mad rant or mania against these companies i have genuine experience and i can see what they are doing openly so in these videos, I just try to call out these companies for doing bad things or just things that aren't great. In addition to, I'm also calling out the parts of the community because I've genuinely been on some of the forums, especially on Facebook, and I've had these community members in these forums literally quite out and out tell me that, you know, ZT is garbage, like literal rubbish in comparison to their lord and patron saint of Benchmade. And for me, I find this completely ludicrous. I mean, you can't tell me that these two knives are, you know, or that the ZT is poorly made in comparison to this Benchmade. I mean, we're talking, this is 20 CV steel, full carbon fiber handle, and, you know, titanium on this guy. And, and like, honestly, this is, as far as value goes, better steel better manufacturing, better fit and finish, better materials for less price and still made in the US. So it kind of blows my mind. And I've even pulled community members and had them say that they would compare Benchmade, Benchmade of all people, to Corvettes and Rolexes of their respective um, you know, industries like the watch and car industry. And I, I just have to say, if you think that a Benchmade is the Rolex of the knife industry, um, you just, I don't want this to come off rude, but you just are uncultured. You have not seen other more expensive knives out there. And I don't know, maybe maybe it's just me personally because I'm actually not that big a fan of Corvettes. I prefer things like Porsche 911s over Corvettes. And you know, as far as watches go, I tend to prefer the Omega Speedmaster over the Rolex Submariner. But you know, there's no way of saying that these knives are premium or deluxe. And I think there are some people that in the community genuinely do see that, you know, Benchmade offers it sometimes, especially with things like the Griptilian, they offer good value, hardworking knives that, you know, do their job well, but never would I consider a Griptilian a bug out. I wouldn't even consider my 270 or 2750 Auto Adamus uh, any form of luxury. And that is kind of saying something because this is about a $350 knife. So this is not super cheap, but at the same time too, this is, you know, a Strider and it's also closer to 600. So, you know, this being compared to a sports car or a high-end like $20,000 watch, uh, you know, the only people I can think that would genuinely want to make that statement are people who want to feel better about their purchases. But at the same time too, like, uh, if, if you genuinely believe that a Benchmade, even a higher-end Benchmade, is performing at that level, you have yet to actually encounter um, like a full custom knife because my whole thing is if you're calling this a corvette then what are you calling this like a bugatti like because this is like i said like this is a full custom here and there's so much more to the knife world than just benchmade but anyways the the problem really becomes with benchmade that they have a level of people who genuinely believe that their knives are you know, the freaking best of the best, the top of the line, you know, high performance knives. And what that ends up 
kind of trickling down to or boiling down to is that you have such a community of people that are willing to vest a lot of money and ultimate blind faith into a company that is just going to take advantage of them. I don't necessarily want to say that they're going to straight rip you off because once again, I don't think that these knives like especially more like the Griptilian are horrible values, but they are going to charge you a premium. Like there is genuinely, and people have even out and out said it, like even Benchmade purists have out and out said, just pay the butterfly tax. Um, you know, like I'm not the first person to say or talk about the butterfly tax. Like ardent Benchmade people will admit that there is genuinely a butterfly tax just to own a Benchmade. You have to pay for your little butterfly. And I just, I don't think it's worth it. Um, yeah. So in, in all reality, there's that. Also too, moving forward, uh, when it comes to Benchmade, there's been a large lack of function really driving a lot of their knives. And We'll kind of circle back to another point with their more functional designs, but a lot of their more modern designs that have been, especially in the gold class, have been very much artistic, very, you know, just, they haven't been a good blend because I want to say that like, you know, with higher end knives, like this Benchmade Skirmish, there's always going to be a degree of art, artistic license, right? But at the core, something like this Skirmish that was made many years ago by Benchmade, this is artistic, but also highly functional. This is still totally a knife you could use to cut open boxes. I do on occasion when I carry it, feel like carrying a big knife. I do. And this is a totally functional knife. And once again, albeit a little artistic, but their newer knives, like the Tengu Tool, are just blades that are just useless. Um, yeah, so there is a strong, especially in their higher end knives, strong lack of function, and I think that really does hurt their brand. Last, and certainly not least, is I think the biggest killer for Benchmade to me, outside of their whole purist um, Benchmade lover kind of fanboys, is the fact that there's a strong lack of innovation in their knives. Um, I mean, and I think SHOT Show was a really good example of this, where they released the bug out in just about every color in the rainbow. And the, the reality is we're not talking about different blade shapes, blade steels, though they did offer some different blade steels. We're talking about literally this knife, just with a whole bunch of different colored handles and different materials, titanium and carbon fiber and such. And so realistically, like there's a strong lack of innovation here um, with their core working man tools, which are gonna be by far the most necessary and best tools in their lineup. They're really just kind of, you know, slightly tweaked the handles, made them different colors and, you know, changed the blade uh, or didn't change the blade at all. So I really see like a strong lack of innovation in Benchmade as a whole. And, you know, when there is innovation in it, I see more like going towards artisticness and less functionality. And once again, this is proof, the skirmish here that, you know, you can blend, even Benchmade knows this, that you can blend, you know, an artistic form, uh, you know, a good looking knife into a completely functional tool. And so for me, I think it's just really disappointing to see where Benchmade has gone. Uh, because for me, I would consider something like the skirmish to be made in their, in their like golden era of making knives. I think like when they, when Benchmade made the uh, skirmish, that was like their peak. This is when they were making things like the Griptilian and many other highly functional blades that just performed. And not only that, they were truly innovating. When this knife came out, it came out in S30V steel, and that was a good newer steel for the time. And I do realize that Benchmade has made several knives in Magna Cut and of course 20 CV like you're seeing here. But at the same time too, that's only just now. Magna Cut's been out for nearly two years. They've been pretty ardent about not jumping on the bandwagon. And two, or and secondly to that point, their heat treats are highly questionable. So we don't know actually how much performance you can expect to gain out of their premium steels anyways, because their CPM crew wear is not heat treated very hard. So anyways, guys, that is kind of my long rant about Benchmade. Um, I'm sure I'm going to make some people mad. And once again, it's not necessarily my intent to make everyone mad. I mean, clearly if you're the person 
throwing the ZTs under the bus and taking your Lord and patron saint uh, Benchmade, you feel free to unsubscribe and just leave the channel. Um, you're more than welcome to. But if you're one of those people that just likes a knife and you know you're like a blue collar worker, you're just you know using that knife to do your job, these knives are totally adequate for that. There's just a lot of hype, and unfortunately that hype has led Benchmade to believing that they can charge some ridiculous prices for some absolutely amazingly mediocre products. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.